poles. I have the cell phone uh, propped up on a battery here. And I got the soldering iron, 80 watts, good and hot. Uh, I did a couple of holes. Well, I did one hole already. Uh, you want to make sure that this is tinned as best as possible. And uh, this one has a point. This tip has a point on it. I'll wipe it down a little bit. So I should be able to dig. Oh, I got a piece of paper towel in there. Oh, boy. All right. Oh, ouch, ouch, ouch. All right, let me see if I can lift that off here. Okay, so I got that soldering tip cleaned up a little bit. Idealistically, you want it tinned as best as possible. This uh, with the reflections, it's really hard to see, but it is tinned. But it has kind of a sharp point, so we're gonna uh, grind the tip of this in here first, and you'll you'll get an idea of how much solder goes in by how much length. I'm gonna hold my thumb right about here. That's about three inches of solder. So uh, I'm gonna look over the camera, so hopefully I won't mess this up. So this goes into the point. Like that. Oh boy, and I'm going to feed the solder ahead of the tip and let it wick down in there. The point is going to transfer that heat right down into there and it should sweat in there real nice. I almost took all of that solder and there, I'm going to let go of it. I hit it again. You see how it's uh, concave? So it is wicking down in there. And there it is, all three inches. Bam. And let that baby cool. And move the light. I don't want to disturb it, but that's uh, excellent. This is the way, the proper way to do it from the workbench of uh, KK7ZR. That would be me. So that's cool. I'm going to bring this up uh, in front of the camera, and I'll show you here. Pretty awkward because I don't have a good way to mount this. So the camera. Ouch! God damn, that's hot. Okay, so where are we at here? Where's the one I just did here? Okay, yeah. So see with enough heat, see how that concaved in there real nice. And there's the previous hole, and I got two more to do. But that took three inches of solder. So anyone that says that that's not sticking or not going around uh, is incorrect. You don't actually need to put that much solder in. I did that just to emphasize this here. Uh, I got a freaking mess going on. Let me back up and show everybody what I got going on here. Whoa, I got something going on. Let me back up here. Uh, in fact, I'm going to turn the camera sideways. Bam. There we go. So there's the workbench. There's the coax jumper. All I'm doing is making a jumper for my, my linear. A couple of three feet or so. So that's what we're up against. This isn't even a silver one. This is a high quality one. It's got, it came from uh, Antenna Farm. A great place. I highly endorse them. That's some sort of a phenolic. It's not Teflon. Some of the websites and stuff I was reading don't like the Teflon. This is uh, some other kind of material. I don't remember what it's called. It's an actual Amphenol company, so it's extremely high grade. So it doesn't always have to be 100% silver coated. I don't know what the makeup of this. We can look it up, but it's a true OEM uh, connector. None of this made in China shit, so crap, whatever. So I got two more holes to do. And this, coupled with all the uh, still photos that I have, should uh, help some of the new people or the people who are really frustrated with putting on... Uh, PL259 is the correct way. Uh, they're free to email me. Suggestions. We can have some workshops locally if people need, but that's the way to write, that's the right way to do it. It's good connection solid. It's going to be 100% waterproof when it's done because this is uh, uh, LMR 400 UF. UF stands for Ultraflex and it's actual rubberized coating. Uh, so it's really, really rubber. It's like an SO or SJ extension cord. It's not plastic. It all has some plastic, but it's really, really rubbery, just like a piece of rubber extension cord. And you see it flicks and pops. So uh, the PVC uh, vinyl uh, coax will be the same deal. Just a little preparation, a little hacking and stuff, but it's a good feeling when you get it all done. So this is so good. This is going to be indoor. I'm not going to put uh, uh, heat shrink tubing on there. You could do that if you want. But I'm going to solder two more of these uh, connections. There are the holes. Uh, pump in uh, that's three inches of solder. That's a lot of solder in there. So the other two I might just do two inches or one inch All you really need to do is just make a contact point when you screw this in there when it's tinned It actually is making contact. So technically you don't even have to solder it But uh, <laughs> you definitely should make electrical contact. I mean a, a waterproof contact uh, seal with the solder I'm moving this around because I'm trying to get the cell phone to focus, but that solder, that pre-tinned, is ground up right on the ID inside diameter of this coax connection. So 
it's not far to go and there's plenty of uh, heat and so I keep talking about thermal mass and thermal inertia and all that's coming from is this big hex stock here of iron uh, and you really need that because as soon as you put this on here this is a giant heat sink if that drops at temperature 50 degrees you're outside of the optimal melting zone of the solder and so you need that inertia, uh, that momentum. So as soon as that heat starts going out toward the, the uh, connector, all this heat in here, this is your source. This is your, your bank, your head, so to speak. So like a waterfall, your pen stock, all the heat that's already in there is going to go rushing to that tip. Because regardless of how many watts the soldering iron is, it's not going to be, it could be 200 watts, 500 watts. It's still not going to be enough time to heat up and transfer it to your workpiece. Because what will happen is it will solidify. You see that so many times you put a hot soldering iron, or a soldering gun on something and it starts to melt, bleh, it just kind of freezes. Uh, so you need enough thermal mass, thermal inertial, inertia to kind of just pull you right through there. But see how that wicked in there and concave real nice and neat? It's sweated right in there. So, so there you go. 7-3.